And sorry if I said your name wrong. And uh, he's an ENFP. And he asked, uh, do you think people are unfair to your type, especially the ESTJ? A lot of people I know say they hate ESTJ, so I've always wanted an ESTJ perspective on this. You know, it's funny you say that. Uh, what, what do you say is ENFJ? Yeah, it was an ENFP, and he asked e uh, e ENFP? Okay. that people are unfair to your type. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it unfair because life's unfair. Let's face that. Um, people get angry at me a lot, like especially whenever I, uh, when I talk to the opposite sex, you know, uh, that I might be interested in them. They they always uh, they always hate me at first at first, but then once they spend more time around me and get to know me and pick up like my humor and like you know my personality type, um, then they start to love me. I mean, yeah, I, I I'd like to say something about that. I have noticed a lot of people will always be like, man, Blake's just mean. Blake's a jerk. Something like that. I've been called cold hearted. I've been called I mean, Blake the snake. This the, the <laughs> snake. Yeah. And I think that uh, as an ENTJ, uh, I do better with people than most ENTJs just because I'm more accepting um, as an ENTJ. So when people are explaining their problems and stuff, I want to just totally destroy it with like just the very foundation with of their knowledge. problem. <laughs> okay, explain that. With knowledge. What? Explain. Ex okay. Well... <coughs> If somebody's talking about like a, a problem, uh, coming at me with like one of their problems. I was actually talking about your accent. Oh, with knowledge. Okay. Uh, Ty Lopez. You know that guy that, that the commercials always come on? He's like, you want to check out my house, guys? He's like, you know, I'm just going to show you around. And it's not even his house. My 47 like, Lamborghinis and my 67 <laughs> Steps program. Uh, You'll be got me off the later. couch. But uh, enough about Ty Lopez. He gets enough, he gets enough you know. <laughs> totally fake. Marketing as it is, we're not gonna we're not gonna promote him even more. <laughs> he does do uh, Myers Briggs personality typing though. Apparently he's an ENTP. Apparently he's an ENTP. But I don't I don't know. Um, he's ADHD too. Oh, that's interesting. We were just talking about that on a uh, Slack. Hmm. Okay, so um, there's more. Oh man, we're already running at seven minutes. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do they relate to other people. What do they do for fun when they aren't working? So how, first, how do you relate to people? How do I relate to people? Uh, well, I, I like, like, does that mean, what type of people do I like? Or, I guess, I but also, people? like, I guess, oh, by the way, this was by JC, and she's a ESFP. Okay. Um, how do I relate to people? Well, usually, um, if somebody is doing something, or I know they're probably from, uh, like I walk into a room with somebody and I know I'm going to be uh, talking to them, I know they're just totally different than me, you know, uh, like they just totally different culture, I'll try to be the listener and learn as much as I can about, you know, uh, about them so that I can quickly adapt myself to, uh, you know, I thinking like they think. I notice you do a lot of, um, like, you'll walk in a room and you'll look for um, people's, like, you, you'll see, like, their clothing or you'll see, like, um, maybe you'll be able to tell their nationality and maybe talk about that. I don't know. I just see you always point out stuff like that, and I never do that. So, you know. Here's, here's one thing. Bing, bing, bing. Little uh, thing. I'm not sure if it's just me or if it's an ESTJ thing, but whenever I, um, whenever I talk, to people who are from a different, like, English is a second language to them, you know, they have that accent about them, whenever I talk to them, if I'm not careful, my own accent will slightly change into something that's, it'll, it'll basically copycat theirs, because I feel like they could understand it better if I talked slower and in their accent, but in English. That makes any sense. It might just, I don't know. So that that's could just, get offensive. That could get offensive. It could be. But it's it's not it's a slightly it's just slightly affected. It's interesting, not too much. But yeah, wow, that's cool. Uh, do you consider yourself a guardian? Oh yeah. <laughs> Why? Man. Well, I mean, maybe of society, or just or just in general, it doesn't matter. Yeah, in general, I feel like if anybody's gonna be doing the protecting, it'd be me. I mean. 
But he here's the thing. If I know somebody is far more capable of protecting something than I am, then I will assign them to, you know, take care of it or protect it. Because uh, I don't want to be worrying, I don't want to be worrying about, like, my own security and needs. I'd rather have somebody else, you know, help me out with that. If that makes sense. But, yeah, um, I like to delegate uh, my security, not just take control of the situation to where I'm the only one who is securing it. I want to make sure that there's, I got other people, other eyes on the ground that are securing the situation for me. Okay. And sometimes whenever I talk, it's kind of militaristic, but uh, I've done a lot of uh, military prepping in the past couple of years. Yeah, so, so you do consider yourself a guardian in that? In yeah, that yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so also, these are all by the same person so far, like these last few ones. Come on now, <laughs> some more participation. Do they consider themselves loyal? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, in terms of, like, I just I get disgusted at the idea of, um, you know, me cheating on somebody who, or me, uh, in, in relationships especially, uh, I just get disgusted at the idea of getting with somebody who is already in the in a relationship. It's probably because in the past I've had it to where you know, I've seen that happen. And things go terrible, and I just, I, I cannot deal with that. I've also seen people betray other people, and it's just sickening. It's like, they'd be... Not, not just me, I see it they like... They tried to be Trey. They, they tried could, to... They couldn't be Trey. They couldn't be Trey! <laughs> right. Don't betray Trey. Pierce. No, but, um... So, that's interesting, because you said that, uh... In the past, you've seen, you've seen yeah. a lot of this, and that's the reason that, that you don't... Mm -hmm. Do for me, I would I would be like, well, if I do this, this might happen, based on what I've seen from other people or myself or whatever. Yeah, if I if, if somebody comes like if a girl texts me, she's like, hey, you want to come over? And I'm just like, I know you have a boyfriend or something. I will think back to a time whenever uh, in, in my childhood, whenever uh, a man I knew went out and cheated on my mom with a woman and it's just like it that thought is just like I don't want to be I don't want that guy to be my mom and you know feel the same emotions that she was feeling and crying about the situation she was in you know yeah uh, so yeah I'd immediately let the maybe not immediately but sometime just let the guy know that uh, you know his girlfriend was trying to cheat on him with me yeah we're gonna we're gonna move on. Move on, please. We gotta go fast. Yeah, I know. Um, like Sonic. We got we got stuff to do. So um, we got things to do. People to see, talk to. I'm gonna go to this uh, event later. Uh, do they consider? Oh, sorry. How do they deal with change? I love change. Love it. Um, actually, you change up your room all the time. Yeah, I do. I don't do that. Yeah, he changes up his room. He'll like. To, like move his desk and his like futon and I'll stuff. I probably change it about once a month, and then I'll I'll be like, "Whoa, this is perfect!" And then a couple weeks later, I'll be like, "You know what? It looked better this way," and I'll move in and be like, "Yes, that's perfect." And then a month later, same thing. But hey, I'll tell you what: I've been in like thirteen to fourteen households in my entire life. Uh, my mom, she moved around from place to place, and that could be a contributing factor to it. Even though it says on the Myers-Briggs website that ESTJs don't, uh, on the 16 personality types website, it says that ESTJs don't like change. Is that, is that a thing? I don't, I don't think so. Or they, whenever maybe, they're in changing, maybe, they go under stress. I think it's more about whether or not you're the one enforcing the change or not. Oh, okay. Whoa, your pupils just dilated, dude. Like, okay. what the heck, man? They were like this big, and they just like zoomed in like when you, when you realize that. That's interesting. I'm going to start watching you now. <laughs> that was interesting. I, I've never seen that before. That freaked me out, so I could not keep that out of the video. It's my, it's my SI. My <laughs> SI. That's such a sensing joke. Okay. That was a good one, but... Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do they deal... Oh, so... Are they controlling? Are you controlling? Am I controlling? 
probably more controlling than most people, but, you know, I always try to work on, like, being the leader that tries to get other people to lead, you know, because that, that's, that's the best practice. But if I see a situation and I know the abilities of a group and I know they're not going to take charge and, you know, get something done, then I will be the one to, uh, you know. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that if I don't see people taking initiative, I'd do the same thing. And, and sometimes I feel like when people are doing something really wrong and I can see they're about to mess up, I'm like, yeah, sorry, but uh, this one needs to be done. And I'm sure you would, you would see that somebody's not doing the best thing that they could be doing based on what you know from the past, right? So you, right. Would, you would intervene, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, we've got way more questions than I thought we did. Oh, so. Are we getting more as we're talking here? Yeah, we are. Dude, we might. Dude, Slack is like really awesome. Like, there's a lot of people on there. It's awesome. We could do a live stream, you know, and just have. We could, and and I want I want to do that, but. Uh, we have a lot more videos coming up uh, during the summer. By the way, when school gets out. Yeah, we might you, do some more. You tell when you get out of school, May twentieth. Really soon, yeah. Yeah. So. So um. So anyway, some good stuff happening. What do you value in people? What are your motivations, and in what way? Do your functions as a person drive your life? I value people's open-mindedness, uh, but not sporadic to where they're doing, um, you know, several things once and they never get anything done. I value people's, you know, work ethic. Like whenever I see somebody is just putting hundred and ten percent in a project, it's just like, yes, I love you. This is what I love about you. I love you. Um, it's, it's love because they they. Uh, Take pride in their work. And you should take pride in your work. Because... I have a question. As long as you're fighting mediocrity, I mean, I respect that. What? So this is a question I have, right? What is so, it? So for um, work, when you're doing work, do you, do you just do any work? Or does it depend on what kind of work? Do you need to see the value in your work? Yes. If I'm doing work and I know like I'm, this isn't going to you know, help me then I'm probably not going to be as motivated to do it. But if it's work that, you know, I'm just passionate about and, uh, well, any work somebody's passionate about, they're going to do very well. But if it's work that I know is going to contribute to my long-term success, then yes, I'm going to be getting at it so harder than everybody else. We have a lot of questions, so if I didn't mm -hmm. answer your question completely, it's because I need to, like, skim through them. So is this a part um, one or what? Chad wants to know. Okay, we'll get we'll have some time for Chad. Time maybe. How does he like his eggs? Dude, I eat five eggs every single morning. Uh, <laughs> you know, I used to have them like um, made into an omelet, all nice and you know nice looking. But then I eventually just got impatient with the whole omelet process and found that it was quicker to just scramble them. Just like screw it, you know. Just scramble it, man. Just scramble it. I mean, like I, oh, omelet. I was an omelet guy for several months, and then I was just like, you know, one day I was like, you know what? Hey, so, that was faster. So maybe that's your that that's your introvert sense in creating first a routine and then going. You know what? It takes too much time, and I need to invest my time in better things for the day. So taking that out of your, mm -hmm. so you, you can sort of relax more as you go through your day. And get more done. Okay. Plus, it cools down faster. It's already broken up. So, uh, uh, how would you motivate yourself or others to do things such as finishing unfinished work? How would I motivate them to finish unfinished work? I would, I would like stand, sit right next to them, actually. I'd be like, explain to them the vision of why, like, the work that they're doing right now, what it could amount to. Just get them to see the bigger picture, you know? Oh, yeah. So, basically... And if I can't do that, then the work isn't... It's not worth doing, honestly. Maybe you're tapping into your intuition there and coming up with different outcomes from your work. And probably you, you probably... I, I, I see this in you. You'll start out at a low scale. You'll be like, you know, you could do this, and this could happen for you. And then if... You know what? This could even happen. And if you did this, then maybe even like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just try to, like, get people to... That's interesting. You really do win people over with stories, though. The better you are at telling stories, the better you, at, the better you are at, like, winning people over and, like, selling them on an idea. 
Absolutely. Intuitives, I feel like, are really good at creating stories, you know, that they can share with others. Um, now, my intuition might just be, like, in gear right now because my 20-minute drive over here, I was listening to classical music, and I was just thinking the whole time about you, just telling me, oh, wait, oh, activate your intuition. I'm like, okay, I'll see. And I did it, so. Yeah, that's awesome. So you, mm -hmm. you came up with a lot of creative ideas? Yeah. Awesome. So, um... Stuff is good. What is it? It's yerba mate. It's called enlightenment. Enlightenment. That's the flavor. It's kind of like tea. Okay, so if you have a conflict, um, not like serious conflict, but small things, for example, like a little brother or a partner in your life with someone close to you, what is in most cases the source of the problem depending on what type they are or in general? So, so oh, that's a big th question. they want, yeah, I know. They want to know every type, like, <laughs> Damn. but, but, <laughs> um, but, okay, let's start. What's the one at the very top? Always ENTJ when lists are started in MBTI. Cause usually the people making the MBTI lists are ENTJs and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be at the top. Yeah. So ENTJ, we're going to start there or what? No, no, no. We're not going to go to every type. That's just too much. Okay. Good. But, um, but, um, cause we don't, we Sorry. don't have time. Sorry, man. Um, but how do you handle a conflict that's not too serious, but just with someone in your life that's close to you? I think you're pretty stubborn, personally. Yeah, there's stuff that's been happening recently. Uh, like, people are trying to throw away my ideas or change, like, what I'm doing, telling me that I should, that we shouldn't do this. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? This is the better way to do it. And look look at what's happened in the past. Uh, people have just been doing this for like years. Like for instance, with my student organization, uh, I've been trying to get them to use something like Slack or uh, another communications app instead of just email. And people are like, no, we don't need it. Uh, just do email. I'm like, dude, we got to communicate with hundreds, if not thousands of people. So, I mean, it hasn't worked well in the past. We haven't been able to get a lot of projects done, so we need to try something new. We got to be innovative. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty stubborn, and I try to, you know, qualify why I want something to change or why I want something to go my way. And yes, I get ticked if things don't go my way, but it's depending on if I'm, you know, grounded or if I'm like crazy up in the head. Okay. So there's another one. Uh, this person asks how you use your FI. My FI? Yeah, say 415. So how do you use your FI? Or explain what happens when you're in it. the group. FI, follow it. Yeah, but like, okay, it's, it's your in, internal value system. And so you always make the most logical decision, the best decision based on what is logical what is, and what is efficient. And so um, FI is more like what you value in the sense of like, you know, you, if, if there's a more logical decision, you're going to go for that one more than you would for your value system. So your value system, how, like, do you think that it's very well developed or do you think that it is a big part of who you are in the sense of like, maybe, maybe it's always running in the background just a little bit and you're always like, you question it or how does it work for you? It hasn't always been this way, but I feel like I've solidified my values uh, really like down solid in the past several months, um, but you know, stress in your life will make your values a little bit jaded. It'll like you, you won't be really sure. You won't be one hundred percent sure of what your values are. Well, me, anyways, uh, if there's a lot of stress going on, because um, you know, and I thrive on stress. I guess I've, I've just had that a lot. Um, had a lot of stress in my life. Um, so wait, what was what was the question? How do I answer it? <laughs> okay, good. I was just trying to find the next question. Oh yeah, how you use your FI or what happens when you fall into the grip, which is basically the grip. using your FI the most, which is underdeveloped. When I use so, my emotions. Uh, yeah, which means uh, like make decisions based off of them. Which which means that when you when you get in that grip, it's like uh, it, they're usually it's very like, compulsive. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't use it. Hey man. See, I, I just, I get really angry. Why? Hold on, hold on. Um, let's see if there's any more. Uh, it looks like I was going to kill him. Was like, was like... God, wait a minute. 
You know what? Uh, so you know the the judging types, the ones that uh, mm. that make make more decisions than they do like snap, snap, snap. You know the people that are known to be late. It's like sort of a stereotype. What do you? Uh, how do you get along with them? Or this is gonna be the last question. Thank you. Now I feel better about answering it. <laughs> do I get along with people who what? Uh, you know, perceiving types. Like, like okay, Dylan's a perceiving type. Mm. Um, there's a... Uh... It's not that I... Okay, with perceiving types, I feel like I, can, I tolerate them, and I kind of just... No, they're, I, they're, I... They're, they're making less decisions, and they're more about just, like, taking in more information. It's not just, like... It's not just, like... like Dylan, Dylan's an ENFP, so, so you can have ENTPs as well. So it's just like, I'm just talking about like in general, like taking more information than you do, make decisions. What do you think about that? Well, I try, I try to warn those types that, you know, there's a lot of information out here. We're living in the information age. And if you don't filter what you're consuming, you're going to have a lot of mixed opinions mixed beliefs, you're not going to really know where you stand, I mean, especially in the earlier stages of your life, like in teenage, because we're impressionable, okay? I'm sure, uh, you know, perceiving type who's like older in their adults who solidified their beliefs more would, uh, you know, not be as affected by it, but I feel like it just makes people get so crazy and overwhelmed with information since they're just you know, letting everything come in and just like having no uh, keeper at the gate, no sentinel in their brain to uh, you know, keep things out. And that leaves room for, you know, neg negativity to leach in a lot easier. Yeah. But, I mean, so, so I'm not sure if I answered that right. think people should make decisions. And people should be more oriented to making decisions, even if it's not necessarily the most logical thing when it's based off their values. They should they shouldn't just like be inactive because they keep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> hey, it's my first video, dude. Yeah, I know. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about that. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, we'll probably do more videos in the future. Uh, definitely, definitely. So, some new stuff coming your way. Uh, Hope I was so entertaining. Yeah. We gotta go. We got stuff to do. So, I'll talk to you guys Thank later. Call. <laughs> uh, ciao.